Your Uncle Oz is here. I've got to be the uncle today because I want to show you something in Excel that you got to watch out for. I'm not going to be the friend that's all rah, rah, great. You can do it. Everything is going to be fine. And then you go out there in the world and get run under a hammer. Today, I'm the uncle who's going to have some Elijah Craig bourbon and lay down what's what so that you will be okay. If you follow me on LinkedIn or Twitter, you know I am very wary of artificial intelligence and machine learning because they make mistakes and often you don't know a mistake has been made until it's too late. Excel now has ideas. It's based on AI and ML and I don't like it. Let's play with it. We've got Alex has given two $100 checks. One was at the softball game and another was at the summer picnic. Now let's click in the data set and look at ideas. Go to the home tab, ideas. Now it's telling us information about the data, stuff that we might wanna know. We've got a sum of the donations by method and event. The winter party brought in $885 worth of checks. Now, I'm not interested in that. So I'm gonna click no for is that helpful. So let's scroll down, donation by event and method. All right, it's giving us a lot of data here. Show all 16 results, let's see what else. For method, check, name Florida has noticeably higher donation. Okay, so it's telling us about some extremes. Okay, so we might be interested in some of this data, we might not. But here is the natural language thing. This is what kills me. Let's do this. Total donations, right? $9,550, good. Top three donors, okay. This is where we gotta really think. What did we want? It's giving us the top three donations. It's not giving a sum and showing that like Florida has given 750, 600, and 700 total. Maybe that's what we want is the name and the total donations. Let's try this. Total donations by donor. All right, so now again, we gotta know more about our data and how all this hangs together. You and I will call them donor in natural language, but let's try person. Oh, okay. All right, so let's insert a pivot chart. We've got this nice pivot table and it's telling us not the exact question. Our exact question was total donations by person. This is showing us total donation by name. Okay. Now, here is some course data. We've got all of these people. Alex took courses one, two, three, and four, took them out of order. None of Alex's courses were retakes like Angelo's course two was a retake. Now our cursor is in the data set and I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna ask who took retakes. Now this is weird because yes, we've got an Alex, but we've got no Andrea in this data set. And it's given us this list of names. And what if I said, okay, yeah, these people took retakes and then I blindly insert this and I build a nice report and send it to somebody. And then they say, who the hell is Andrea? Here's what the deal is. It's still stuck on that previous data set. With the cursor in this data set, I've got to start all over again. Click ideas. Okay, so now we are dealing with this data set. Here's the summary it's given us. Who took course two? Course by student where course is two. All right, we've got a list. Let's say, okay, I'm gonna insert that. But what is this data really giving us? It's saying distinct count. 
and it's saying distinct number of course by student where distinct number of course is two. What the hell is that? And my original question is gone. I asked who took course two. So let's look into what's happening here. We've got Andy twice. Danielle twice. Cynthia is in here twice. And that distinct jazz is Cynthia was not included in the list because Cynthia took course one twice. She didn't take more than one course. So she's not in this list. You really got to know your data when dealing with this. And it started out with the question of who took course two. I'm going to go back. Let's try this. Students who took course two. We're back to this distinct count stuff. Ah, maybe try this. Okay. That space made a difference because everything in the course column, it does not have a space between course and the number. Now we do have a list of students who took course two. Notice I've misspelled took, but we still have an answer. Let's try this. Who took a retake in Q3? Enter. Showing student where retake is Y and completion is between July 2019 and September 2019. We're in the year 2018. Go 2018. So I had to be specific. If I had taken that one that said none and not paid attention to that 2019, we would have been in trouble. This is a lot, but that's what uncles are for, right? Now we've got a lot of data about orders. That first row, Greta's the sales rep. Rachel is the customer service rep who took the order for the color charcoal in the oil medium. 10 jars are tubes. Ideas. Who sold the most acrylic? This is nasty. Who sold the most acrylic? Did we want the sales rep or did we want the customer service rep? And then it's giving us a count of rows. What if we wanted the total dollar amount of acrylic? AI and ML, they aren't good at this kind of stuff. You know, a human being will look at you and say, I don't know what you want. Hopefully you get the point by now. This stuff is messy. You have to know your data. You gotta be careful with ideas. Anything that's relying on AI or ML. Listen to your uncle. I care about you. I don't want you to get run under a hammer and get all messed up. Be safe and I will see you in the next video.